Exercise 6A3 will bring us through learning objective number 8. Let's see what we have here. Assigning costs to units. Data concerning a recent period's activity in the mixing department, the first processing department in the company that uses process costing, appear below. And we see we have two cost categories, materials and conversion. This is what we want to pick out. We got our cost of work in process at the beginning of the period plus equivalent units in ending work in process, equivalent units of production required to complete the beginning work in process, and cost per equivalent unit for the period. So we have a mixture of information here. A total of 8,000 units were completed and transferred to the next processing department during the period. Okay, so 8,000 units out. Beginning work in process inventory consisted of 1,000 units. So we know we have to complete those 1,000 first. And if 8,000 were transferred, we know we're dealing with 7,000 that were started and ended. An ending work in process inventory consisted of 2,000 units. Wow, that's a lot of data. Let's see if we can't make sense of any of this. What's required? Compute the FIFO cost of the units transferred to the next department during the period and the cost of the ending work in process. So what's being asked of us here? We're asked to compute the costs of the units transferred how much money was transferred out, and how much money is left in work in process. Well, that's not part one of a production schedule. Part one doesn't deal with dollar signs. So we know we're not doing a quantity schedule and equivalent units. Part two only gets us to the cost per equivalent unit. We're already given that. So what's being asked of us here is a cost reconciliation, is part three. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do part three of the production schedule, which is a cost reconciliation. This is probably the more complex part of a production schedule when we move away from average cost to FIFO. So let's, uh, let's uh, put our, uh, our, he our headings down. We're going to need two cost categories. Materials and we have conversion costs. And while we're at it, we'll add our uh, cost per equivalent unit for materials we're told is four dollars and forty cents because this would have been the last line in a production schedule this would have been the last line before we got to part three and our cost per unit of conversion is a dollar thirty so our whole cost is five dollars and seventy cents so now we're ready uh, uh, to go so when we start a cost reconciliation the first thing we have to do is costs accounted for as follows costs accounted for as follows because part two remember is costs to be accounted for this is costs accounted for as follows so let's deal with the units that were transferred first all right we'll start there so units transferred what was transferred well our work in process beginning count uh, was transferred so our work in process and we're dealing with costs now so we need a work in process beginning balance. That was transferred. And we'll put that under our total column, by the way, not over here. That was transferred. Well, are we given that number? Yes, we are. Cost of work in process inventory at the beginning of the period, we're told is 2,700 for materials, 380 for conversion. We only need the total, which is $3,080. Costs to complete because we have to complete them. Costs to complete this work in process. We're going to need costs to complete materials and costs to complete conversion. But for that, we need to know how many equivalent units the, what are required to complete the job. And we are told here, are we told that? Equivalent units of production in the ending work in process and equivalent units of production required to complete the beginning work in process inventory we're told is 400 on material and we're told is 700 on conversion. So what do we do here? Well, I think it's easy enough. We got to spend money to complete 400 equivalent units. If it's 440 per equivalent unit and we got to complete 400, uh, we got to spend $1,760 to complete that. There's 700 uh, in units that need to be complete in terms of conversion. At $1.30 a piece, that's $9.10. Oh, sorry, $910. So if we add this up, our costs just to finish 
This is, this is what we had in beginning inventory. This is how much we spent to complete that. Here's our total cost of those 400, or sorry, of the beginning work in process inventory. So we can call this total cost from beginning inventory. I said 400, but if we read the question carefully, we're told that there were 1,000 units in work in process at the beginning. We spent this much money to complete those 1,000. It already had this much money involved. Now, a note. Someone out there may be saying, I thought we were only concerned with costs incurred during the period. Yes, costs incurred during the period to figure out our cost per equivalent unit. But when we're transferring stuff out, we have to transfer the entire cost. If the stuff in inventory at the beginning of the month already had $3,080 in it, and we're transferring it out of the work in process T account, remember, it's in a work in process T account, right? And it had a beginning balance of $3,080. Well, we have to transfer that $3,080 out. So for transfer purposes, we're concerned with every dollar we're sending out. But to calculate cost per equivalent unit, we're only concerned with costs incurred in this month for FIFO. All right, keep in mind this is FIFO. So total cost from beginning inventory, uh, that's done. Next, we move on to units started. Units started and completed. And completed. Well, we transferred 8,000 units. But... This beginning inventory represented 1,000 units. Once we spent this extra money, we transferred 1,000 units. So if we transferred eight, we started and completed another 7,000 units. So we can say under materials, it was 7,000. And under conversion, it was 7,000. So we can multiply 7,000 by 440 and 7,000 by 130 and add them together, or just multiply 7,000 by whole cost. And that's what we'll do. And we will get 39,900. 39,900. So we add these two together, we get 45,650. This number here is total cost of units transferred. So we're, we're halfway done. That's our total cost of units transferred. Now all we have to figure out is our total cost of work in, uh, of work in process left. This is the same. You do this one the same way that you would do under weighted average. So it's work in process, ending balance, and to figure out our ending balance, we need to know our equivalent units in terms of material and our equivalent units in terms of conversion. And we are told equivalent units of production in the ending work in process inventory in materials is 800, in conversion costs it's 200. So 800 times the 440 gives us $3,520. 200 times 130 gives us $260. If we add these together, we get $3,780. This is the total cost work in process ending balance. So we now have our work in process ending balance. We have the total cost of the units transferred. All that's left is to total our total cost, $49,430. And that is done by adding this, and by adding this, this plus this equals this. So this number, 49,430, should equal the number, the total cost that we got in section two. In other words, this is the cost that, that we should uh, arrive at up top. Nice, isn't it? That is equation 6A3. Sorry, equation, problem 6A3. Okay, 6A4. This is a more comprehensive question. Learning Objective 6 and Learning Objective 7. Let's see what we have here. Equivalent units and cost per equivalent unit. Refer to the data for Health Check Core in 6.6. .6. For those of you with a book, we're on page 231, exercise 6.6. .6. Required, assume that the company uses the FIFO method of accounting for units and costs. Number one, compute the equivalent units for June's activity for the first processing department. This is part one of the production schedule, which is a quantity schedule and equivalent units. So let's 
make a note that we're doing the quantity schedule and the equivalent units. And we start the quantity schedule the same way, units to be accounted for. And if you've done 6.6 .6 under average cost, you'll find that this first part is identical, units to be accounted for. Work in process, our beginning count is 80,000. And units started, we're just taking the information right from the question, units started was 760,000, which gave us a total of 840,000. Same as we got under average cost. So there are the total units we must account for. Total units. Once we have units to be accounted for, we're ready to go ahead with units accounted for as follows. For as follows, and here we're doing our equivalent units. And we need a category, a column for every cost category. In this question, we have all three materials. We have labor, and we have overhead. All right, off we go. So units to be accounted for as follows. So we have our work in uh, process beginning count from work in process beginning count. And our beginning count, we're told, were 80,000 units in our beginning count, which we have up here. They're the first 80,000 units to leave. But we need to turn that into equivalent units for the cost for the month. So all we're concerned about here is the percentage incomplete of these 80,000 units. So if we look at uh, question 6.6, .6, it tells us the beginning work in process inventory was 80% complete with respect to materials. That means it was 20% <coughs> incomplete. So 20% of 80,000 is <clears throat> 16,000. Moving on, we see that 75% uh, complete with respect to labor and overhead, which means at the beginning of the month, it is now 25% incomplete. So 25% of 80,000 is 20,000, and also 20,000. So any costs incurred this month will be to finish this 80,000, the incomplete portion would be equivalent to making this many units out of materials, this many out of labor, this many out of overhead. So there we go. So there's from work in process beginning count, and we add to that units started and completed. Units started and completed. And we're told that we transferred out if we flip the page back here, units transferred out 790,000. But 80,000 uh, were the first ones to leave. That was the work in process at the beginning of the month. So if we transferred 790 and 80,000 was already there, we must have started and completed another 710,000. Well, as far as equivalent units, since they are 100% complete, they are 100% complete with respect to all three costs. Then we have our work in process ending count because these two numbers must match. Here we've got 790,000, here's 840. So we better have an ending count of 50,000. When we look at the data, we see that our work in process June 30th is in fact 50,000. Now we have to figure out, well, of the costs incurred this month, some of it was to partially finish some of this 50,000. Let's turn that into equivalent units. And we see that the ending work in process inventory was 60% complete with respect to materials. So 60% of 50,000 is 30,000. And it was 20% complete with respect to the other two cost categories. 20% of 50,000 is 10,000 in each case. So we are ready to add this up. We get 840,000, which we should. And our equivalent units are 756,000 in terms of raw material, 740,000 in terms of labor, and again, 740 in terms of conversion. So there's the first part of the question that was asked of us was to uh, compute the equivalent units. Number two, determine the cost per equivalent units. That is the second part of a quantity schedule. So costs per equivalent unit. And we started with costs to be accounted for. Costs to 
B. I counted four, and here are our costs. Number one, we have work in process, beginning balance. We have to account for that, although we don't put it here. To figure out our cost per equivalent unit, the work in process beginning balance, that cost was incurred last period. It's just a balance forward. So we're given cost categories in overhead labor and materials, but no total. But if we add them all up, we can get a total, 146, 600. And we have costs added. That's all we're concerned about in FIFO is just the costs that are added. And we're told we have 592,000 here. We have 370,000 labor. And we have 907,200 for materials. If we add all three up, we get 1,869,200. And you'll recall that was 2,015,800. So <clears throat> we'll divide this by our equivalent units. And our equivalent units are right above 756,000. 740,000 and another 740,000 here we'll get our cost per equivalent unit equals if we do this division we get a dollar 20 here do this division we get 50 cents here and if we do this division we get 80 cents here for a whole cost of two dollars and fifty cents that is our whole cost. So the question asked us to determine the cost per equivalent unit for June. In terms of material, it's $1.20. In terms of labor, it's $0.50. Cents. In terms of overhead, it's $0.80. Cents. Cost per equivalent unit. Whole cost per equivalent unit is $2.50. There we go.